Kia ora everyone, welcome to the Freak Show. Yep, <laughs> this channel has our own Freak Show. Better than Barnum and Bailey's, baby. Definitely, because in our Freak Show, we actually have real freaks, not malformations. These, these freaks, well, you'll see, are truly the freak when it comes to being a human, when it comes to being decent. And now, on with the show. Here's a freak for you. He's one of those serial killers straight out of a horror movie. Actually, he's a textbook serial killer horror movie kind of person. When I saw this freak's interrogation, I thought to myself, man, this guy personifies the term matter of fact. When describing what he did, like brutally did, eh, there's just nothing there. It's fucking out of it. Anyways, before we get to the interview, here's a bit of a backstory for you. This freak comes from Australia. Uh, he's not an Aussie, but he comes from Australia. And back in 1993, this matter of fat killer murdered three wahine over a period of just a few months. Now, here's something before we get into it, is that the head boys, the shrinks, they said that this guy had a mental disorder where he found sexual arousal comes from the not just the stalking or pre-killing, but not just the killing, but also the ritual of which he performs post-mortem. And those shrinks believe that they knew him and they all gave evidence in regards to who this freak was in court. And those shrinks, well, they all get great pay, which they do. But here's the thing, is that when Freak Boy here went to prison, they all ended up with egg on their face. I'll tell you about it in a sec. Now, they managed to track old Matter of Fat down as his car was seen at one of the kill areas or grab zones by a G, a wahine, who had awesome spidey senses. So anyways, they brought him in and set old Matter of Fat the freak down. Now, he doesn't know that they have him yet. Now, see if you can notice any difference in how his behavior changes, emotionally or physically, any type of body language that gives him away. Because in the other videos, when people get snapped out and they get hit up with the origin question, they have all different types of displays of emotion. But this dude, this freak, well. But let's go here from Mr. Matter of Fat in the Freak Show of Dumb Criminal. Welcome to this episode's Freak. Before continuing, I must inform you that you're not obliged to say or do anything, but anything you say or do may be given in evidence. Do you understand that? Yeah. What is your age and date of birth? I'm 21 years old. I was born on the 14th of April, 1972. Okay. Are you an Australian citizen? Yep. Yeah. Are you currently employed? No, I'm only employed at the present time. All we'd like to do, Paul, is if you could just run through, um, starting with yesterday morning. I got up in the morning about 20 to 8, 7.30, 20 to 8. Right. As I was coming down, say, past Karingal Drive, mm -hmm. I noticed temperature gauge started to go right up to high. So I just pulled over and in Sky in Road. Road yeah. And right across the road is, you know, your golf course and, that, yeah. and everything. So I pulled up there and I checked under the car, under the bonnet, and found out the hose could come loose. When we saw you down at your flat this afternoon, mm. I noticed a number of cuts on your fingers. Yeah. Can you just um, put your hands flat on the desk here, so that um, just right up here. This injury here is a long uh, sort of a cut. Just explain how you got that injury and when you got that injury. I got it yesterday and I was working on the car. What, how are you saying it occurred? Well, the fan spins this way, yeah. so if I'm standing at the front of the car, yeah. like here, fan yeah. spins that way, the alternator sits there, yeah. and there's some wires running down underneath the bottom of the radiator, there's a wire at the top, mm. which was for a light that I just recently put on, and it must have been when I was putting my hand down there, I caught the fan. <clears throat> Why did you have it running uh, at that stage, when you were checking the well, radiator? Clumsy worker, on cars. Cool and calm. Anyway, Freak's MO's modus operandi was that he would pull out a gun and he would force the wahine to come with him and then what he'd do is he'd bash them and then strangle them and then he'd sexually assault them and then he would knife them and kill them and then 
commit rituals upon the bodies of the victims, the dead wahine, and then he'd take off home like a pathetic piece of shit. Like I said before, he's a textbook horror story serial killer. Now, one of the ways in which they got our freak is that he cut a hole in a fence and he used a pair of pliers to do that. These pair of pliers, and what they did was just like a fingerprint or a bullet, they uh, matched it, the CSI boys did, with that of the cut wire to a pair of pliers that freak had in his room. Now, back to the interrogation, or an interview really, because he's not really putting up much of a resistance, as you'll see, but, but old genius here decides to tell the cops that he's returned to the scene of the crime. It's gold. Are you aware that a um, girl was found murdered in Frankston? Yeah. Today being Saturday. Yeah. When did you first become aware of that? Well, I saw some police cars and everything when I was driving up Sky Road this morning and SES workers. So you saw SES workers and all that mm. in Sky Road? Yeah. And they had some white tape across the oh, yeah. walkway. I saw you. Jesus. Yeah, I saw you and I saw uh, the other guy. And that was what were you doing when you saw that? What where were you going or what were you doing? Oh, we were going to the wreckers. And this next part, the cop hits him up about how unlucky the freak is that he's always around when something goes wrong. And one of the things to notice is the long breaks of silence that the cop gives Denia to reply to and how this type of freak doesn't feel the same way in that anticipation of having to answer a question. He just sits there blatantly with a dumbass look on his freak face. Yesterday, your car was parked opposite the location where the body of Natalie Russell was found. Mm. On the night that Debbie Freem disappeared, you walked over to Kennedy Railway Station, missed the train and walked back. And on the night Elizabeth Stevens disappeared, you walked in a very close proximity to Lloyd Park on your way to pick up this battery. Do you think that's fairly coincidental yeah, um, it is. in all the, all the circumstances? Yeah. Are you responsible for the deaths of any of these women? No. Oh, well, that's lucky then. You can go now. A sample of your blood is requested for the purpose of um, confirming or disproving your involvement in these matters. All right, we'll just going to suspend the interview for a short time. Mm. Is there anything else you want, like a cup of coffee or a glass yeah, of water? Yeah, I would like another cup of coffee. Yeah. How do you have your coffee? Uh, white for two. All right, I'll get you a cup of coffee, all right? Just have a short break. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. While the cop was out getting him a cup of coffee with two sugars, old Denia here decided to cough up and spill the beans since he realised the CSI was going to do him over. So he's told the other cop, and now this cop hits him back up about what he said. Um, you spoke to Detective O'Loughlin here, and... Um you uh, told Detective Overlockton that you were responsible for the murders of the three, the three women. Is that correct? <laughs> Just tell us in your own words, Paul, what happened in relation to the death of Elizabeth Stevens at Lang Warren. I saw her get off the bus. I walked up behind her, stuck my left hand around her, ran her mouth like this and held a, a gun to my head right here. I started choking her with my hands and uh, she passed out after a while. And then I pulled out the knife okay. and I dragged her to where she was found. Then I threw two branches on her body. Can you tell me why you attacked her on that night? Just... Just had... Just had the feeling, that's all. Where, what sort of feeling can you possibly describe it? Where, where you had this feeling? Just wanted... 
just wanted to kill woman wahine he hates them this next clip's out of it this uh wahine one of his victims named deborah freem she was a, a young mum and she had popped out to the store to pick up some milk and just never came home now 50 found a car like in the middle of a paddock somewhere and it had a smash in the front of it and they figured out the csi boys that it was brick or some kind of dust from bricks but they just couldn't put one and three together denia the freak explains what actually happened okay, can you show, tell us what happened here well the car was sitting over there this is uh, Debbie Freem's car we're talking about. Yeah, Pulsar. <clears throat> right. I was walking down this road here. Right. Uh, saw it jump out of the car. Yes. Ran into the milk bar here. So I jumped in the back seat of the car. That's right. And the car was directly across the road, so I could see it from inside the car in there. What caused you to select her as a, at that time? Just that gay feeling. Right. So what happened then? And then she came out. While I was crouched down, I could hear her footsteps coming closer to the car. Mm -hmm. And she hopped in the car, but she didn't see me in the back. And she went to do a U-turn, pulled out the gun that I had, just as she was doing that turn. She kept going straight into this wall. What did she hear? She put me there which calls a ding on the block. Right. And then you drive off down this kind of okay? Yeah, down that way. Now I'm dragged her about a metre into the trees and where she was lying against the fence. Mm. And I broke off two branches off the nearest tree and threw them over the body. And I hopped back in the car again and I adjusted the seat to match my height because she was a lot smaller than me. And headed back to Madden Street. Why to Madden Street? Wasn't too close, wasn't too far from home what her name was and everything out of her wallet, so. Mm -hmm. I took it up to the golf course and buried it. So you'd be able to show us where that is? Exactly. Okay, would you be able to find the spot? All right, I'll find it. You've brought us up the track to this point where you've just kindly uh, cut the fence open for us. Yep. This is the area in here you get where the uh, you've indicated the purse is. Yes. He's digging around and you know, like, really, we could have just said, relax, Paul. It'll be here. If you say it's here, it'll be here, you know. But he was frantically digging because he... It was like we weren't going to believe him. Oh, I should have shovel. Just hold it there. Just shake a bit of the mud off if you can, mate. So that's the location where you buried the purse? Yeah. And who does that purse belong to? Debbie Frame. And I'll put it in the bag. The last of this freak's victims was a young lady called Natalie Russell. She was uh, 17 years old. And freak here, this genius, he grabbed her from a bike path and dragged her through this big hole in the fence that he cut with those pliers I mentioned before. Anyways, thank God for posty workers with spider sensors. What can you tell me about this? I <gasps> uh, went up there earlier that day and cut the holes in the fences. What um, did you use to cut the holes in the fences? Pair of pliers. I um, stood here and watched Natalie Russell walk around the corner and then I went through this hole and waited behind the trees there right. until I saw her walk past here and heading that way. Right. And when she got about 10 metres down the track here, I came out of the fence. As we're walking along here, mm. are you still maintaining that distance behind her? No, I was getting closer each time. I walked along the grass like this and make a sound. So you wouldn't be heard? Yep. I was armed with a red handled knife. Where'd that come from? From my place. Is it all you had? Yeah. Just a red handled knife? Oh, and a leather strap. You would have found it at the scene in two pieces. What was that used for? String knife. What was that from? Um, there was a strap off a pair of binoculars I had at home. I grabbed her here around the mouth, yeah. in the left hand, like this. Yeah. I dragged her through here. <laughs> it's crazy, eh? <laughs> the cop looks back to his mate like, what the fuck is this dude? Uh, honestly, eh? Hey, just no emotion, no nothing on this freak. Anyways, back at the station, the cops hit him up again about why the hell would you do this to anyone? Why would you do it? 
asked, what did you want to kill him for? Just same reason as before. No, I've always wanted to kill. Since when? Since I was about 14. This is some weeks after Elizabeth Stevens. Yeah, I was just, like every day, I was just going up, boiling up. Mm -hmm. Till I got to that stage. Now, back again to Shit Dick's MO. He used to pull out, uh, I think it's a fake gun. I'm not too sure, but I think it's a fake gun he used to pull out. But either or, at night time, obviously, it would probably look quite real. And with the size of this fat dude, it'd probably be quite frightening. Were you armed with the same weapon? Exactly the same, exactly the same weapon. Was that the weapon you used when you first approached Elizabeth Stevens? Yeah, that's, that's the one. And the same with Deborah Freem? Yep. Same as the woman at Seaford Railway Station? Yep. Now, here's something else about dipshit, is that uh, he attacked a young lady, and this young lady actually fought this fat prick off and got away, so they had him up about that. If that lady hadn't have got away, what would have happened to her? I would have killed her. I've been stalking women for a few years right. in Frankston. Just um, waiting for that opportunity. Right. Waiting for the sign. Right. I think that brings to a point one of my opinions when it comes to rehabilitation for such offenders as these freaks is that and that is, is that this is a progressive build-up for these types of freaks and that they know at some stage that they're going to commit a horrific crime. But instead of being like a normal human being and thinking, oh my God, I should seek help to try and get rid of whatever this feeling is, these freaks just don't care. They just do not care. And hence, that is one of the reasons why I believe, in my opinion, rehabilitation is a foregone conclusion. Those types of freaks should never be allowed to set a foot outside a prison again, especially an Australian prison where they can hurt more Aussies. But then again, it is just my 21-year-old unemployed man, Paul Charles Denyer, was charged at the Frankston police station at nine o'clock this morning. The station was under tight security as Denyer was driven away in a divisional van escorted by a second police car. So what happened to this freak Denyer? Well, the judge, he gave him life, which uh, isn't life, it's 30 years for this creep. And that is a non-parole period. Now, before we wrap up this episode, there are just two more things to say. The first one is, is what I said at the start of this when it comes down to those shrinks that gave evidence at the court case that said that they had figured Denia out and got the egg on their faces. And why they got egg is because Denia, once he went into lockup, he wanted to be a woman. Yeah, crazy, eh? Oh, Denia wanted to become a wahine. And none of those head shrinkers figured that out. And number two is the reason that we've made this episode the way in which we have. And that is a message to our brothers and sisters in Australia, the Aussie. That 30 years, those 30 years, that sentence that was given to him, that wasn't his original sentence. He got 30 years, which means that he gets out in 2023. And this message, our message to the Aussies, this is definitely for you guys because this freak, this sideshow freak, he's never going to be able to leave your shores at all, ever. No one will have that. <laughs> he's never going to be on a plane anywhere else, eh? Like, no one will take that thing. He's yours. So it's like, well, if you have one of those things, I would definitely say one of those things needs to stay in prison until it is either old beyond repair or dead you know or dead and apparently that is exactly what the judge and the original sentencing judge in australia and the australian courts did yeah that's uh when i read this case and i read this case ages ago but then this 
docos now come out and it's like holy shit man i read about this dude and when i was reading him i was thinking he here's what i thought i thought if australians had the death penalty right i just say you had australians had a death penalty um would this guy would you say that the crimes that this thing did this freak would that call for that penalty to be given and if you think yes then if you don't have the death penalty then you need to have law which does the following it keeps these freaks inside for like ever you know if you are gonna ever consider them for parole it has to be based on something like a health thing and they've only got like maybe a couple of days to live or something i don't know you know that but you have to work out for yourselves but, but you definitively need to keep this thing inside because you know i know we all know this thing will definitely kill another one of you guys and that's why we made this episode pointed towards the people of Australia, our Australian, our Aussies. All of you Aussies need to be completely aware that this thing is going to be getting up for parole this year. And what I believe you guys should do is go grab this guy. And who is this guy? This guy is the original sentencing judge. His name is awesome <laughs> but you need to ask this guy if if you've got him on your side <laughs> i'm pretty sure you could have quite a good run at getting that legislation through the house this judge the original sentencing judge i do believe in my regards is that he is correct <laughs> because this judge this aussie gave that denia freak life without parole and that <laughs> that is perfect but that ruling that he made that sentence the appellate courts the supreme courts looked at it uh, because it was challenged and uh yeah they won they fucking pushed it back because they said that he pleaded guilty so by way of that the law could be argued that he has to receive a minimum because there was no law that says you can that's the thing with law sometimes dickheads win <laughs> and that's when you have to say well is he really a dickhead or is he just enforcing the law because if he's just enforcing the law then you know that that law needs to evolve hey because it obviously does as they do over time but they just take too long and the thing is you you think well he's been in prison since 1993 and he gets out like holy shit in all of that time in all of those years no one's changed that law to be able to prevent anything like that happening again holy shit, shit. and no one has oh my god so denia is getting out and that's why we have to reach as many aussies as we can and the reason why there is <laughs> is that i'm not a big channel at all at the moment just give me a bit of time <laughs> yeah give me a bit of time but i want to reach as many aussies as i can because you know at some stage there may be someone standing outside a supermarket asking for a signature maybe i don't know i would assume that that would probably happen because there is a lot of criticism coming out now because he does get out if you could if you know an aussie or if you are an aussie then uh share this with another aussie this video or just even the name paul denia just so they know that if something were, were to pop up that they could have at least an understanding of what they were signing at the supermarkets <laughs> just in case someone does and right now deja vu in this message there is now two more things to go the first one light and the second one heavy the first one to the aussies i'm not a politician i do not follow politics unless it is funny uh, so i do not know anything about this dude but i take it there's probably a good chance that he might be australian and, and if he is an aussie then chances are he's probably a good guy and if he's not i'm sure you'll find out then beat him up and chuck him out but uh, until that point uh, he seems like quite a good bloke what we're asking the government to do is to make sure that paul denyer stays locked up forever he 
also happens to be, or happened to be, at the time, the boyfriend of the youngling that was killed. So, grab the judge, and then grab this guy, <laughs> and go get that law changed. Now, in this mighty Amigo team of these Aussies, there's one more Aussie to go. And out of these Amigos, he's the most important one to me. And that Amigo is the youngling's dad. Those sub -I members and subscribers that follow already know how much weight and the gravity of that weight that I place in what the whanau, what the family of the victims say when it comes to sentencing. As long as it's not insane, Utu has to be made. And here's the thing, we don't have to think what it would be like to be Natalie's dad because Natalie's dad tells us here. It's just something you don't get over. It's, it's, you learn to get out of bed every morning and put one foot in front of the other, but it, it's there in front of you all the time. It would be fucking horrible. I could tell you that would be such a horrible, and I don't want, along with all of the sub I of this channel, all the members of this channel, that we don't want anyone to ever have to end up in a situation where that is how they're living day by day. This freak mustn't get out. Mustn't get out. You have to find a way. You have to find a way, Aussie. And that. That would bring me to the end of this episode to sign off on this message to all of my viewers out there. Be it you're a subscriber, a member of this channel, or just passing through. If you know an Aussie, <laughs> even if you don't like them, send them this link. Or just text them, Paul Denia, just so that they know. So the next time they, they're grabbing a loaf of bread, they'll nod their head and say, yeah, yeah, give it a I'll definitely fucking sign that. Stay safe, everyone. <laughs> Stay safe, all ears. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Especially you guys.